Friday and it's Refresh Friday. And I think this, well, this Friday is all about AI and its uh, role in the future of uh, automotive retail. We've got um, myself, Alex, of course. Good seeing you, Alex. Like the uh, pretty yellow shirt you got on today. No, oh, thank you, thank you. And uh, we've also got um, we've got Chad and Ryan, uh, both from Car Story, but also good friends of ours. We all go way back. Um, and it's yeah, it's, of course, it's a uh, what Memorial Day weekend. So looking forward to that. <clears throat> um, Chad, everybody's selling cars, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, is, it usually is a pretty big weekend for cars. It's, oh, hell yeah. Yeah, and even Monday. Uh, we close early Monday, but it's it's usually a pretty busy day. So, but anyways, uh, Chad, welcome aboard. Thanks for having me. For, um, for all of us that's watching that doesn't, maybe they don't quite know who Chad is, why don't you give us a little bit of background? Hmm. Uh, well... I've been I've been in high tech my my entire career. Uh, one of my one of my first jobs actually I was doing a lot of work with OEMs with Nissan, Ford, Chrysler. We were back in the day uh, developing configurators and pricing tools for websites. Um, and actually, we we were doing some AI work way back when when Nissan first launched the Titan full size truck. Uh, we were actually trying to predict what the configuration options should be because they had no prior experience with full-size trucks. And so that was some of the, the, my early forays into uh, AI for automotive and, and did a number of things along the way. Spent some was time. that, was that with Trilogy? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I thought so. Yep. So did, did, uh, did a number of other companies um, in the ratings and review space and the social space and, uh, uh, and then made my way back, uh, back over here to Car Story with a bunch of uh, actually old trilogy buddies. So, uh, been been at this now for about four years. Ratings and reviews was that with um, Bizarre Voice? Bizarre, yes. Yeah. Are they yeah. still around? They are. They uh, they went public. Um, they got uh, uh, they actually got sued by the federal government for buying their only competitor. So it's uh, apparently oh, wow. the the government frowns on monopolies. Uh, so so after that, they uh, wow. <laughs> they ended up uh, they ended up uh, running along. Oh, and there goes Josh. <laughs> I was afraid of that connection. Yeah. Oh, there he is. <laughs> so uh, you've got you've got a book coming out, right? I do. I do. What's up with that? Unreal- man? Where did that come from? <laughs> Uh, that that came from my midlife crisis, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? Ryan's got a kid going off to high school. I I turned forty and uh, decided right to write a book. Uh, yeah, it's a different yeah. kind of baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It requires this one requires me to get up really early in the morning and 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 write a whole bunch. But yeah, I've been been working on it for about a year, and and it comes out on uh, Father's Day, so so I'm excited. Awesome. Well, June. Yeah, Father's Day is what June seventeenth. June seventeenth. Is that still uh, celebrated? <laughs> There's really no such thing as Father's Day. I it was all Mother's Day. Yeah, I think we had this discussion on one other <laughs> refresh right. Friday. Right, Father's Day is just the day when you get a card and some breakfast, maybe. Yeah, then you still go sell, yeah, yeah. You go do things for the kids and the wife. <laughs> yep, <laughs> no doubt. Uh, something else I have a question around. Um, you founded this thing called B Cave Arts Foundation. I did. I'm, I'm sort of curious with this. What's up? Uh, so, so that was during my time. I was, I was, uh, I actually ran and got elected to city council in my local town and, and was, was doing that job and, you know, sort of felt like we were spending all of our time on the infrastructure of the city and not enough time on the soul of the city. And, um, uh, you know, I, I had this vision for bringing sculptures to this piece of parkland we had. And, and so I started this foundation to, to help make that a reality. And, um, so started sort of recruiting people to help me out. And after about four or five years, we, we actually pulled off creating the sculpture park and now we have this, uh, really awesome spot in the city. And so, yeah, that's, uh, that's my, my small, my small way of trying to impact the community a little bit more. That's cool, man. That's interesting. Yeah. If you ever, if you ever get down to Austin, I can, I can, you can check it out. Yeah. I haven't been there. Well, I haven't been at the vast offices for probably ever a year and a half, two years. Yeah, you wow. gotta see the new place, man. Yeah, we've got 
They yeah, I haven't been to the new well. offices. It was almost right before you guys moved. Yeah. Yeah, so now we're, we have one of the most uh, famous old music venues from in Austin, and uh, uh, it's a it's a great spot. We held uh, we held Autovate here uh, mm-hmm. late last year, so so yeah, it's uh, it's not your traditional office to say the least. Are they going to be doing Automate again next this year? Yeah, it's it's already on the books. I think it's November sixth and seventh. November sixth and seventh. I, th- I think it's, what's it's, like who comes who comes to that? Is it dealerships or is it vendors? We we had a great turnout uh, last year. Uh, we had uh, we we had we had tons of great dealers um, here. We had we had thought leaders in the industry. Um, uh, you know we had some great great vendors come speak and support the event. Um, you know Alex uh, Vetter came down from Cars. He spoke. Um, uh, we had we had a lot of a lot of innovation uh, to talk about down here. Uh, so it was all about. Sort of, sort of future technologies and so a lot of the vendors came and shared what they were doing but but dealers came and shared some of the cool things they were doing as well and uh, so it was all around and and, and the, the the great thing about the event if you talk to anybody that went it was it, it was just a it was a very austin event it was very relaxing and casual and informal you know in this awesome setting and uh we had live music we had great food uh last year it actually happened to snow which doesn't ever happen in this town so yeah <laughs> uh, uh this year this year we're pretty sure that's not going to happen but but it was a great event so yeah you guys definitely need to put that one on the books and what, what are the dates again and if a dealership wants to go how do they yeah, yeah cliff i think i believe the dates are the sixth and the seventh cliff should have the automate website yeah cliff banks mm-hmm. should have his uh, uh that that site up if it's not up already it should be up very soon um and and you know we'll we'll promote uh start sharing it out so if you follow us on Facebook or Twitter or you know, any of those things. I'm sure you guys will, you will all hear about it. We'll definitely get that, get that information over to us so we can help promote as well. Yeah, definitely. So Ryan, like there's some, yeah, there's some other guy on here. Uh, like <laughs> with a, with the, the great the background. background. <laughs> yeah. that Ryan guy. Okay, of his ear. Up, no. <laughs> like I was telling y'all before we started, some, some of your guests have to show up with these elaborate brick brack backgrounds and look up. Stunning. <laughs> Stunning. <laughs> Uh, I can show up in front of a beige wall and be just fine. Just so. Look amazing. It doesn't matter. You, you. you make Thanks. beige look good, Ryan. It's, it's the best I got. I, I, I was kind of noticing in the video, my head might actually match the wall color behind me. So good, uh, good choice. Depends on how you turn and the way the uh, light comes down. If, if the light doesn't blind yeah. the camera entirely. <laughs> got yeah. that invisible man effect going on. Yeah, it's good. You see the shirt it's moving probably around. better that way, actually. Ryan, I have a few things to ask you, and, and I hope it doesn't make you uncomfortable. But so you were with Car Story. You left, went with another company. Did. And then you came back. I did. Why? Did you? Have, oh, uh, there was a question. Oh, well, <laughs> actually, I, I met Chad at an event, saw him again. He showed me some of the things they were working on, and I wanted to be a part of it. I mean, it's really that simple. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, Vast has got some really smart people. Uh, when I shared this event, I said there's going to be you know, some very smart people and I'll be there too. And I feel that way. One of the things we talk about a lot is you, you never want to be the smartest person in the room. If you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. And I never feel that way when I visit our office at Vast. It's really obvious to me. I'm not the smartest guy in the room. Um, Dr. Frankie is brilliant with some of the things they've been working on. Uh, I know we're going to talk a little bit about that, but there's there's a very neat culture at Vast. And when I saw the productization of some of the data that they've been sitting on for 12 years, I, I needed to be a part of it. So I think um, you guys know me. My, my history is consumer experience. That's really one of the things I'm most interested in. And I feel like uh, the application of AI and machine learning and the ability to help the dealer translate some of those things that we know about the car in the market absolutely helps with the consumer experience. It becomes more of an education effort instead of a sales effort. And that's a tangible feeling for the consumer. So that, that's well, why I'm here. You may not consider yourself to be one of the most smartest, but you're definitely one of the most likable. No. I, I'll Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'll try not to mess that up. <laughs> So you were saying, so, so again, the whole topic for today's uh, Refresh Friday is this, you know, AI um, and its role in the future of automotive, especially on the retail side. Uh, so let's dive into this. Um, 
obviously AI is a hot topic right now. It's a big buzzword. And anytime our industry latches onto a buzzword, it actually starts to get a little scary. But before we go there, um, maybe explain like, like QR codes. Yeah, QR codes. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, remember that uh, that that uh, forum thread on uh, on dealer refresh forums about QR? I think that was one of the longest threads yeah. of all time. Yeah, yeah. It's still going. I think it's still going. <laughs> maybe once maybe, we'll maybe there's some AI Tuesday. around QR. Tuesday. <laughs> that, but, that um, should be a Tuesday bump, except it doesn't really need it because it's still active and and going. So. Yeah, next Tuesday we'll bump it. Oh yeah. That's, that's, that's all you, Alex. But with this being such a hot topic, I mean, first off, why is it such a hot topic? I mean, it's, I think it's been around, like you said, Chad, earlier, it's been around for a long time. Why is it now just such a hot topic? Yeah, it's funny. I mean, you know, it's, it's been around since the, the mid fifties is, is really when, when the term was coined, um, uh, you know, companies have been working in the space for a long time. And it was for the longest time, it was a um, uh, sort, sort of technology looking for, for a problem. And, and, and it was, it was, uh, it was almost academic for a long time, you know, trying to, trying to figure out if we could make this work. And what we discovered for decades and decades was we, you know, you, you, you couldn't really, make AI work given uh, the limited amount of data you had access to and how expensive computing was. And, you know, so, so one of the big reasons why everybody's talking about this now is because it's, it actually has nothing to do with it being a fad. It has everything to do with it, that technology has changed quite a bit. Um, computing power is, is unbelievable today and it's, it's, it's darn near free. Um, and the amount of data we have access to is, uh, is is tremendous, and so you now can actually start to train models and teach computers to learn and to make predictions and to do the things we've always wanted AI to do um, very reliably and very inexpensively. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's one that's one of the big reasons. And you know, I mean, and now you're seeing it on you know, for, forget automotive for a second, just on the consumer side. You're, you're seeing all these applications pop up. You know, we, we, we don't always know that it's AI behind the scenes, but every time we shop on Amazon or use Netflix or any of these tools, it's their AI is powering so much of that experience. Um, you know, and, and Google recently had their conference. I don't know if you guys saw this, but uh, they developed an AI um, that can make phone calls and communicate, you know, with, with, with folks on the other line. And, and, and it sounds perfectly human. We were watching that, um, what was that, two weeks ago, Alex? Yeah, it was just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and I had brought the video up on uh, that Refresh Friday. And yeah, it's, it was, um, it's pretty interesting. Um, Robocall is about to have a totally different meaning. I mean, that, that's really interesting. It, 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 <laughs> It'll well, be better guess, than Ashley at account services trying to sell me something, right? <laughs> well, and there was a study by what Gartner that shows, I think, what by 2020, that 85 percent of all customer interactions will be handled without a human agent. Which, I mean, I'm thinking, all right, that's 2020. Uh, that's only a couple that's years. A couple years. Like, yeah. come on, man. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, I mean, how do you feel about that stat? And then, furthermore, uh, where do you see? from a customer service standpoint, how's that going to change the landscape of the dealership? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, the, 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 the stat itself might be, might be aggressive. Um, you know, the thing that, the thing that's hard to imagine, you know, when you're sitting in the middle of something is, is the exponential growth. You know, you get that hockey stick curve. I think we're, I think we're seeing a hockey stick curve with this technology right now. So um, they could be, they could be, spot on. And, um, uh, and, and I think that's what's more relevant is, you know, whether or not they get that stack correct, what's what's happening right now is exponential growth with this technology. Um, you know, I think, I think it has great things to bring to to the customer service realm in a lot of other areas, especially in the dealership. Um, you know, I, I haven't, I haven't gone through, you know, sort of, sort of dealership trainings, but I know, I know a lot of folks that do those trainings and, and, and I talk to them about their process and what they're trying to teach and instill. And, and I know the struggles and the stats from dealer turnover and things of that nature. And it's like, well, gosh, if, if, if you can actually bring AI in and have it, have it perform a certain part of that job, sort of, sort of to perfection, um, uh, and, and, and still have a human component on top of it for when, 
when you sort of can take it, you know, you sort of reach a point where it's like, okay, great. Now I actually do need to talk to somebody. I, I think that's going to do wonders for, for the experience for, for both consumers and then, you know, for dealers as well. <clears throat> it's going to be interesting for sure. You like it when it works, the technology, right? I'm thinking, I'm just kind of thinking about your question. You have those bad experiences with some of the voice recognition software auto, I mean, things auto correcting, they're totally wrong. And, uh, sitting on a phone, trying to get the computer to understand. I think everybody's seen that video where you're screaming things at the phone and old people. Alexa was the other example that came to mind where, <laughs> you know, they, they had to have certain words programmed to make it do things. But as, as Chad was saying, as the technology improves, the experience improves because you don't have those bad experiences. Everything's getting better. I think that's, that's crucial and key to, to the consumer experience component. Well, and like I just got, I was just on the phone the other day with one of these healthcare companies and, and, and they sent me down this ridiculous, you know, sort of decision tree. Like if you want this, press one, if you want this, press two, and there's 27 options. And I'm like, how about I just tell you what I want up front and then you listen to me <laughs> and route me to the right thing. Right? Well, a, lot, a lot of the phone companies have been using that. Uh, I know at and and that actually, I think T-Mobile, if I'm not mistaken, was one of the first mobile uh, tele companies that was using some type of AI piece where you would just mm -hmm. speak, say what you want. And then if there was no actual phone tree. Right. Yeah. It's so I, I think this, it's going to, it's going to permeate. I don't think, I don't think this is about wholesale replacement of people. I think it's about, I think it's about augmentation and, and um, you know, really, really streamlining the experience for, for both parties. So you so, mentioned uh, we obviously we're hitting on the AI buzzword. Um, you also hit on augmentation there for a minute. <laughs> How does some of this differ like <clears throat> from some other ones like machine learning, data science? Um, what are some other ones? Are they all just a team that sort of work together? Yeah, so, so the, the way I try to describe it is, is AI, AI is sort of the umbrella space. And um, a, a lot of these things, like for example, machine learning would, would be a it's a subset of AI, right? It's 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 an approach to developing um, uh, AI, and and there's a whole lot of of others that that sort of fit into that camp. And um, you know, ma machine learning is really interesting. Um, you know, one of the ways one of the ways we use it is um, we we teach a machine what a photo is. So if I want to try to to tag uh, dealer photos of cars, I want to say, well, this is this is the cockpit view. This is the rear seat. This is a tire. This is the rear of the vehicle. I actually only need to teach the computer through a few examples, and then it goes off and tries its hand at, 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 at figuring out what photos are. And then I can come back and just like a just like a teacher, I can grade them and say, okay, well, you 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 missed this. You got these right. Okay. And then and then it learns from its mistakes and it and it keeps getting better and better and better. And and those algorithms are getting so powerful that there's there's even systems that that essentially you don't need to teach you can just sort of let it go so for example there is a great one um uh google developed a, an ai to play the game of go which is uh it's it's the game with those black and white little uh sort of pebbles if you will on a big board and mm -hmm. and they didn't teach it the rules they just let it start start playing and it figured out the rules and it figured out strategies simply by playing games, winning and losing, winning and losing. And, and essentially within four months became the best go player in the world, all just through this concept of, of machine learning. So it's, it's a pretty powerful piece of technology for sure. I think it's a little scary. It there's, there's, <laughs> there, there, there are definitely those folks out there that, that, uh, uh, I'm that one of those this, folks. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> There's there's a great there's a great book it's it's called Life 3.0 and it and and the first chapter is it, it's the best it's the best short story you'll ever read because it sort of describes a scenario where uh, essentially AI does become smarter than humans yeah. and even with all the precautions that we take it outsmarts us and we screw up and and it essentially you know takes over the world and those sorts of things so uh, anyway it's a, it's seen, a good point to read who here has seen the movie Her. I haven't seen it. You haven't seen that, oh. Alex, with no. um, with Joaquin or not? What? Oh my, uh, Phoenix. No, I haven't seen her. 
it's around the operating system. He falls in love with the operating system, but a lot of it's based on uh, he gets to know his personality through, I guess, a form of AI, of course. Yeah, right. man, you should right. work more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Chad, you mentioned something around the photo portion and looking at different photos using AI. And I know it wasn't too long ago, maybe less than a year ago, you guys, maybe a little bit longer, had a study showing that, you know, really you only needed X amount of photos and these were the prime photos that you needed. Did you guys use any form of your internal AI to come up with that? So, yeah, so that study, we, we started by asking what we thought was a very simple question, just do, do, do the number of photos affect lead conversion on third-party marketplaces mm -hmm. and and what we found was that nine was the optimal number of photos Isn't that crazy and, but yet everyone tells you have as many photos as possible yeah at well, least 21 at least well, so we, we I, I got <laughs> i got a combination of i got christmas cards and i got hate mail um because <laughs> it, 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 I, I didn't realize this was such a polarizing topic but oh, but yeah. <laughs> after the after the hate mail i uh i said well let's dig into this a little bit more and and that's when we discovered that when you look at these cars that have nine photos, um, it's it's a good cross sample of interior and exterior shots. You, you you sort of have the nine photos you need to understand what that car car looks like. Um, but when you have forty photos, all of the interior shots got pushed to the back. Um, yeah. And and one of the things we found was you know that's that sort of cockpit view, the technology that you're going to be surrounded by every day, is the second most important image to a consumer. And so, so then we came out and we said, okay, you know, the, the, the stat about the nine photos is it's, that's just, that's just math. That one was absolutely correct. But it says, look, if you're going to put 30 or 40 photos up, put them in this order so that you, you don't force the user to have to wade through, you know, you know, eight pictures of tires, you know, on a sedan for some reason, which, which we've seen. Um, and, uh, and, and we actually, we actually then apply that. If you go to like carstory.com, you can see that's actually, we, we sort our images on the VDP based on our research. And all of that is done with machine learning. So a dealership could actually go to vast and maybe sort of get, uh, uh an idea of what photos and, and what so, order you should potentially put them in. Yeah. And, I, and I've got, and I've got that research too, that I can I was gonna say, I, do you have an article or something like that we can share with the community? Yeah. Yeah, I can. I have. Uh, I have sort of the the research. I haven't. I haven't put it together in an article, but I could throw that together and throw that out. On Sounds like the next ar next article. Yeah, yeah write us an know, article. I know. You just you just walk you your way you into got, that. You got, me, you got me. again. <laughs> you don't have to do it over the Memorial Day weekend, though. Okay. <laughs> no, I was expecting sure. it Tuesday, but. Right. <laughs> hey, I want to I want to uh, change gears just a little bit here. Um, you know, anytime our industry, and I mentioned this earlier, they latch on to. A, a new buzz phrase, buzzword. Uh, of course, AI is going to be the next thing. You probably hit, you know, NADA next year, and it's going to be all about AI. Yeah, you hit digital dealer, all the different conferences. Driving sales and uh, is also coming up. Um, it's going to be AI, AI. But there's a lot of companies out there that are probably going to say this is AI, mm -hmm. but is it really? Yeah. And how can a dealership? differentiate and know quickly is this company talking smack mm -hmm. or is this legit ai yeah i mean just making a bunch of fancy if then statements all right exactly. <laughs> well so i i, I tell people to, to look at to ask two questions first first question to ask is how many data scientists do you have on your team um you, you know this is this takes a special breed of, of, of engineer. And uh, for us, it's, it's our data science team. Um, uh, you know, and if, and if somebody says none or, well, I've got a, I've got one guy, you know, you're like, okay, great. Now, now tell me about your data. Because the thing with, with AI is, is it's only as good as the data you, you, you can provide it. And what company after company struggles with is getting enough data to, to teach the machines and data that's good enough, right? I mean, um, I, I can tell you, we, we, spend, <laughs> we spend a tremendous amount of time just cleaning and organizing and normalizing the data that we receive, you know, just on, on inventory alone, right? Um, we see mistakes all the time. Um, and, you know, if you're, if you're operating on bad data, you're gonna have a bad output. Um, so so those, are, those are two, two questions to, to ask right out of the gate. Informative may feel a little uh, intimidated when they ask those questions, but. <laughs> well, well, a follow-up to that, 
<clears throat> so to the dealer at the end of the day, and I guess this might depend on the, the application, but you know, what's, what's really the difference between a true AI as you would define it versus those fancy if then statements? Sure. Yeah. You're, you're essentially, um, at the end of the day, you're trying to generate an answer, right? So in, in the case of, a result. in the case of, our, you're right. In, in the case of our photo example, um, you know, we, we process, gosh, you know, we process 10 to 20 million photos every day, right? Um, you, you can't do that with humans, right? It's just too big of a problem. Um, you can't, you, you really can't do it any other way. That's just an unsolvable problem without AI. Um, we, we're doing a lot of work on uh, the prediction side now, making, you know, forecasting when we believe cars will sell, what they will sell for. And, and, and what that one comes down to is, is, is a question of, of accuracy, right? And, you know, it's, it's also one where, where the, the algorithm needs to get smarter. Um, so, you know, when it comes to, if we, we've all used, you know, Amazon Alexa or Google Home and, and, you know, I'm sure early in the early days, it got more wrong than it got right. And, you know, there's a lot we sort of would stump the, 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 the AI on, but, but I think we also then noticed that it just got smarter and smarter and better and better. Um, and, and that's the other really important component is, is AI learns from what it's doing and you should start to see those, those results improving over time. Um, and, and you don't get that with, with hard coded sort of, sort of, you know, sort of tree algorithms, if you will. You can always write more if then statements. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it's, it's interesting. We, we did, um, so, so we've built pricing models for about, I guess now it's right around 50,000 used vehicles. We use those pricing models to, to, to understand what the market price is of various vehicles. Um, and, you know, what we have found is, um, you know, we actually have to, have to re, re, train or, or rerun those models um, really on a daily basis to keep accounting for um, uh, changes in the market. Um, and so, you know, it, there, there's, a, there's a scale to this problem of both data and processing and how often you need to keep learning from the information if you want to get really, really accurate results. Um, and so it does depend on the problem you're trying to solve. I think I think there's some really interesting problems to solve where where being accurate is is an imperative, and so you, you you have to you have to do it this way. And that's the data that you're putting into the car story insights, right? Yeah. So so that's um, so a couple of things. Which is so one called track on my app. So yes. I'm, I'm totally yes. confused we, at this point. <laughs> well, so so we we we. Uh, we did we did rebrand the the product so that one is called Track and and we also just launched Car Story Appraise. Yeah, so I just jumped on that the other day. I like it. I like it a lot. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So we're so so we're using that data to to do a couple of things. One, analyze the market, um, uh, and also analyze a dealer's performance to predict how much each car will sell for on that lot and when it will sell. Um, and again, back to that sort of problem of scale. We're looking at at the cars you currently have on your lot, nonstop throughout the day, monitoring the local markets, seeing how those predictions are changing, and if they change, letting you know so that you can you can take action if you want. Um, so yes, those are those are two areas where we're using that technology. So we're sort of hitting on uh, you know what sets some of the different AI companies apart from one another. Got a uh, in that area. Um, is there a certain amount of data that the company or somebody going into AI should have before they start diving into this? Yeah, I, it, it probably uh, depends on the problem set of what you're trying to what you're you, you, what you're trying to solve for. Um, when we did our when, when we were doing our photo work, um, you know, we were pulling from a repository of almost two billion photos. Um, you you clearly don't need 2 billion to um, uh, uh, train a model accurately. Um, you know, the reason that number is interesting is because of all the permutations uh, that exist out there. Um, and and, and the, the companies, like what I see from our team is, y you know when you don't have enough because your errors, are, your error rate gets, becomes very high. Um, so so your, your data science team is gonna know how much is enough 
um, it's really hard to sort of put a number on it generically and say, you know, how much do you need um, sort of across the board? And there goes Jeff thunder typing again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My bad. Well, <laughs> Eric Milch, he said he, he asked a question. I can't find it, so I'm looking for it. <laughs> and Milch is, well, that's a whole other story. But anyways. Uh. Hey, Jeff, I was thinking about an example, um, uh, something cool I ran into the other day that Google put out. We were talking about the Go algorithm, but mm -hmm. they uh, created this thing called Quick Draw. Have you seen this? I have not. Okay, so they've done this AI experiment. I'm going to do a horrible job of, of explaining this. It's something you're just going to have to experience to get. But uh, in could the we, training, Can we pull it up on the screen? Yeah, you, yeah, do it. That'd be awesome. Where uh, is it? Let me, hold on, I'll get you a link. It is just do a search for Google AI experiments and you'll see quick draw. Quick draw. Yep. Quick, oh, quick there. draw. So it's not a gunslinger thing, huh? No, but it's, it's even cooler than that. I think so. I showed it to my kids. They were really impressed. So that that's the gauge of cool to me these days. <laughs> All right. We should be showing it. Yeah. So, it's pretty self-explanatory. You, sh you should, well, the video is long and kind of boring and dry, but uh, do the, you should have a link to actually do it yeah. somewhere in there. At the right bottom. at the top. There. Yeah. There you go. Quick draw, let's draw. So here's something fun for a Friday. You can impress your, uh, your friends and family with over the weekend. Make We're impressing better. a whole audience of folks right now. <laughs> oh, well, even better. <laughs> All right, go well, I, I hope I don't have to draw here. You do <laughs> draw baseball. <clears throat> but but this will illustrate how cool this is. Oh, I know. I'm There's going to be, ball. oh, yeah. draw matches, as in like. I see a line, or magic wand, or square. This I is, see television. This is bad. Case. I see a birthday cake, or grass rise, or a <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <A French laughs> rise. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Did it get it? needed a flame in there, maybe. Did it get it or no? They didn't get it, man. I beat it. Yeah, oh, you, oh, you, well, that's <laughs> one way to interpret that data, yeah. <laughs> it's the computer's fault for sure. Yeah. Oh, I got it. <laughs> I'm not even going there. We're going to end this right now. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll tell you at the end how it did and how many of them it got. But what, what it's doing is it. that's a really simple example of machine learning. Chad, chime in on this if, if you want to add some color. But... I think for a dealer that's going, okay, what is this? Uh, it's being able to see examples of something that's right and then it's aligning them. So it doesn't matter how bad you draw for the most part. Uh, it doesn't matter how bad you draw. It's still going to get to the right answer because it's seeing all of those previous examples from people. So there's a couple it didn't get for me too, but by and large, it, it, it can figure out what you're drawing no matter how bad you're drawing it in under 20 seconds. It's pretty cool. It didn't get my match. My so, match. Well, I don't. I don't know what that didn't look like matches to me either. Maybe that's another salient. Like, a, like the little matchbox uh, with the matches and oh, right. No. Yeah. <laughs> what are matches? I mean, up most the people probably would have drawn one with a little flame over the Maybe. top. Yeah. Now, so what, what I like about that at the end, if you get to the end, you can look and see all of the other images that were drawn that described that word. And you can see how it starts to put together these, these pictures and images and be able to define something. And that's a really simple uh, Google experiment around machine learning, which is kind of cool. So where does that, where does that apply to the dealership? I think uh, Chad already talked about it, but just having the amount of data, being able to process all of that data, you can come up with solutions and start to see patterns that a human alone just can't, can't do. You, you don't have the uh, brain power to be able to reconcile all of those disparate images into one category. It's pretty interesting. Hmm. Joe Pastel, he just, what do you write? AI will quickly take over the communications that are the most easy to answer. I think we're seeing that already in chat. I think if there's- Are you uh, open? What's that? Are you open? Yeah, yes. I am. I know. You can answer that one. What? Uh, sorry, I'm- you're I lost. had a conversation with Joe the other day. We were talking yeah. about some of this. So. <laughs> what I was saying was, uh, I think one of the areas that, that 
you know, at least in the automotive uh, retail side, where we've seen AI quickly applied is on the chat side. Uh, there's a lot of chat programs out there that, that utilize AI. Um, Chad, you brought up something earlier. I think it was around pricing and such and using AI around that. How are you guys with Car Story? How are you using AI to look at different pricing within different regions and then uh, I, I guess taking that data and applying it to maybe some third-party websites out there, listing sites, or you know, with a dealership, what can they do with it? I know you've got the car story that hangs on the dealership websites as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so we developed um, uh, pricing models to understand what is what is the market price for every every used vehicle out there, um, and and that is market specific so if you drop one vehicle you know that's sitting in austin today if you drop that in miami you know you're gonna you're gonna get two very different results and uh and then we and then we do an analysis of of the other vehicles that it's competing with to understand where it sits in the local market to understand is it a is it a great deal is it a good deal um and you're right that so so one of the ways that gets deployed for dealers today is with the car story market report um that's that's up and running on about Gosh, now it's over 10,000 dealer websites, uh, as well as some OEMs uh, like VW, Ford, and Hyundai, um, and then marketplaces as well. Um, and then, and then we also license that technology to partners, um, so that you know when you're out and experiencing sites, you you can you can see those deal badges, you can see our pricing analytics, and you know it's just become something that that every consumer wants to know, and and it's it's much more efficient to have the computer go out and analyze all the vehicles and figure out where this one sits than it is to try to build a spreadsheet and try to, you know, make sense of that on your own. Right. I mean, it's just another great area where, where the technology really helps us uh, make better decisions um, and saves us a lot of time. Now, do you guys work with any of the, uh, I don't know what to call them, but maybe the bigger names in AI, like IBM has Watson mm -hmm. and, yeah, so so we actually don't. Um, um, so, so Watson's some really really cool technology, and I know they have a, a, a platform. Um, you know, we're we're very big believers that uh, you you have to have vertical expertise um, when you're when you're solving these problems, these these really challenging problems. Um, and we're fortunate in that we have both uh, the data that we've been working with for 12 years. Um, and, and we have a lot of, a lot of experience across the whole company of working in automotive. And so, uh, you know, our, our data science team only works on solving these, these problems in the automotive space on automotive data. Um, you know, and I think, I think that gives us, um, it, it definitely allows us to go fast and it allows us to, I think, get to, to some really interesting results. Um, but, IBM Watson and those sort of platforms, um, they're, they're definitely great. I think they also have their applications, you know, generic things like chat. Um, there's nothing, you know, chat is chat. You know, you, you, you can train it with, with different conversations, um, trying to understand when a used vehicle will sell, trying to understand what's the DNA of a used vehicle and how does that affect the, the prediction and, and how do you account for a dealer's pricing strategy and things like that. I mean, you know, it, take, it takes a, a different level of uh, uh, expertise, I think, to solve that problem. So the the ch the AI chats out there aren't really AI. No, it's it is AI, okay. but I just it's it's um, having well, a having an AI based chat in automotive versus retail versus telecom. It, it it's all the same. It's it's the the questions are different, right? The responses might be different, but, but as long as you have a set of conversations to train that on, that, that, that's a, that's a pretty, um, well-known problem space. Um, you know, I think trying to, trying to, um, uh, you, you know, predict, um, say who's, uh, you know, how to play chess and, and, and predict moves and things like that. Um, you know, you, that's a, that's a well-known problem space. And, and, and there's enough out there that where you can sort of train computers on that data. Um, you know, but, but as you move into, to this industry and, and to some of the more nuanced parts of our industry, um, you know, the, the expertise, I think really matters. Um, uh, at least that's what we found when, in the work that we've been doing. Are you open is kind of binary. It's either yes or no, right? There's a very defined subset of answers that are right. 
when when you're looking at big problems with what inventory to stock, what features matter, what value do they have in a specific regional market area? That's that becomes a, a lot more complicated. Yeah, that's a whole nother level. Hmm. So obviously, not everyone can do this stuff. We don't believe so. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have 27 data science, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because somebody asked me the other day. Uh, uh, you, you know, I said, wow, yeah, you've got to have a lot of data science scientists for this. I said, yeah, we do. And they said, well, well, I mean, how, how do you hire these guys uh, yeah. or girls actually? And, uh, and I said, oh, we have, uh, I, I said, that's, that's, a, that's an easy one. And you know, like, what do you mean? I said, well, our, our chief data scientist teaches the data science program at, at UT. And oh. so everybody wants to work with him. So when they graduate, <laughs> he just hires the best kids. <laughs> Well, there, there's your secret. <laughs> that, we, yes, it's, uh, it's, it's called cheating. Yes. <laughs> so speaking of, um, what are some other areas or other, uh, yeah, other areas within the dealership that you feel as if AI could really uh, make a big difference on within the near future? Maybe ones that we haven't even discussed yet. I mean, there, you know, I think there's so many different interactions where, where AI can, can have an impact. What about the um, parts department? I was just thinking of service scheduling. Yeah. Yeah. Oh goodness. Yeah. So you got to, especially one. on a day like today, how many service writers are out there uh, padding their schedule? <laughs> right. Well, like thirty. So K let's take, 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 take service. I mean, what are um, what are some of the problems? Like, what are, what what are the biggest problems when it comes to to managing those service departments? The well, mishaps that go on in the shop would be a big one. So uh, mishaps is probably a wrong word, but you've got a lot of programming on cars today. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes the programs don't take. So you can spend an hour trying to uh, get some programming to take into, you know, whatever vehicle you're working on. And then <clears throat> you get the, the dreaded box at the end that says, oh, didn't take or whatever the, mm -hmm. you know, whatever the module says. And now you got to start over. Mm -hmm. So there's two wasted hours. Wow. right there so that's that's something i've mm -hmm. i've got one maybe a little bit more simplistic um a lot of dealerships of course have lunar car programs mm -hmm. and the lunar car programs do not speak with the service crm they don't speak with the dms um right. you know but yet you know there's there's got to be a, a set of data out there that shows when do we get more people asking for lunar cars and what services sure. are applied towards, I don't know. I, I think that yep. there's probably some ideas around that. Yeah. I think, I, I mean, again, I think what's, what's great about, um, you know, the dealership is, is, uh, you know, you guys are sitting on mounds and mounds of data, um, you know, and, and, you know, you can pull that out. You can, you can see, you know, what are the characteristics of people that, um, uh, you know, are, are, are really good about their routine maintenance. You can, you can see which ones are more likely to request those loaner cars versus not. I mean, those are, those are quite frankly, really, really straightforward problems to solve uh, with this type of technology. Um, you know, on the, on the loaner car piece, um, I was actually having a conversation with the, the dealerware guys. Um, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with them. They're, it's a division of silver car, you know, bought by Audi and, um, and they're, they're helping dealers, manage manage their fleet and you know that one of the problems that pops up is you know there's they're trying to figure out well well can we be smart about when we take those cars out of service and drop them onto the used car lot because there's another area where where yeah. those two groups are, aren't really talking to each other and you know and that's one where it's like oh well well actually yeah we we can we can tell you that right we can we can tell you you know do not put any more a3s on your lot right now because you know they're not going to sell and, and you're going to lose your shirt you know wait 30 days and, and, and then do it. Um, you know, and that's a, that's another area. Um, so I, I love those examples where there's just, where there's big data, where there's just a lot of data to crunch. And if you, and you knew in, in, in your gut that if you could crunch the data, you would see a trend and a pattern and, and then it could give you those answers. I like that Chad or use, uh, you know, use car story insights, uh, that data to know, okay, so we've got this car as a loaner car. When should we bring it out? Maybe right now there's a high demand for this vehicle. 100%. Yeah. No question. You know, let's not wait two months to take it out of, you know, loaner service. Let's go ahead and get it out right. there. Yeah. I like that. That's awesome. Hmm. Yeah. It's a, there's, there's a, oh, I just saw a great one the other day. Um, uh, I don't know if you guys ever do this, but 
when I'm sending emails, I'll, I sometimes have to sort of take a note and like, okay, I sent this to somebody, I'm asking them to follow up and I need to, I need to keep track of whether or not they followed up and I don't like keeping the email in my inbox. Um, Gmail just released their new version of, of Gmail and, and this feature just popped up. I saw this email just pop up and it said, hey, you sent this email three days ago and it looked like you were expecting a follow-up. We didn't see a follow-up. Do you want to take some action? I was like, this is amazing, no, right? That- I mean, it's, it's just awesome, Yeah. right? I mean, and, and this is the type of stuff where, where AI is so valuable. Is it just, it's making our lives easier and doing things that we would otherwise have to spend a lot of time so, on. So who's the next uh, industry CRM that incorporates true AI? I, I I am not I am not close that, enough that to that. Uh, oh. <laughs> BD results. <laughs> yeah. Do some AI around some emails, <laughs> video emails. Uh, real quick, Joe Pastel, of course, has another question. He was talking about AI and how maybe it could fix weak uh, VIN explosions. Is there anything around that? Uh, I mean, this is a great company to. Yeah. So so we're we're actually doing some work on that as well. Um, so as I mentioned. Um, you know, you have this garbage in, garbage out scenario with with any type of work you're doing on data. So, so one of the first things we did, and, and it's something we've been working on for a long time, is is looking at ways to better understand what is on a vehicle. A- a- everything from is it the right trim, transmission, feature set, all those things. Um, we did an analysis uh, recently of about four million listings, um, and and saw a twenty percent error rate that meaning there is at least one thing missing or incorrect on 20% of the listings out there in the marketplace today. It could That's be it. Trip. I would think it'd be higher than that. Well, what, how granular are you getting with that error? So we're, we're going down. Error or is it a, a year error kind of thing? So, so, so that would include both uh, trim, transmission, and valuable features. Um, and when we say valuable features, we, so it may not say that it has an AM FM radio and it has an AM FM radio, but that doesn't add any, that, that, that's not something that just quote unquote drives the value of the vehicle. So we, we sort of ignore that. Um, we have the data, but in our analysis, we were looking, oh, you know, 460,000 cars omitted the fact that they have navigation, right? That's a, that's a pretty big one, right? Or, or Bluetooth. ally wheels are voice Bose uh, uh, sound system. So, so yeah, so, so we, we invest a lot in that area and, and that technology, we, we plug right into, to our other products. Um, you know, so for example, if you're doing uh, an appraise appraisal, um, when you scan a VIN or enter a VIN, we're going out and we're, we're, we're doing that. And we're saying, okay, yes, we, we know exactly what's on this car um, based on all this data that we have either because, uh, we've seen it before or because uh, our, our statistics are telling us that, yes, there's a 99% chance that this car has a sunroof because the other 10,000 that we saw like it exactly configured the same way all had sunroofs. Right. And so, so it's just, uh, it's another way to solve that problem. And, and again, it's a, it's a pretty big one out there because obviously you get that wrong, right. You're, you're mispricing the vehicle. You're uh, over underestimating what you're going to pay for the vehicle. And you might be upsetting consumers who are looking at that car online saying, you know, gosh, you, you, you said it had this, but it wasn't that it was, you know, uh, uh, you said it was this trim, but it's actually this trim. Um, you know, they, and we, and we see that as well, where, where you literally get things as big as trim wrong. Um, so yes, that's another great area to apply this to. Well, I hope the OEMs are, are tackling this and figuring using AI to figure out which vehicles customers out there are more likely to purchase and, you know, configuration wise with, with maybe color and, and yeah. packages and all that good, good stuff, because, you know, especially with some of your, you know, being a Benz dealership and having all the different packages and stuff, it can be a real pain in the butt. It is. It's, it's complicated. I mean, I, you know, I'm having lots of conversations. You haven't done a lot of work with OEMs there, Jeff. Huh? No, of course not. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good wishful thinking. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I, I, here's a technology that will actually help them accomplish this. That's all. I'm yeah, they just want to make sure the brand looks nice. Yeah, true, true. It's got to be black, not blue. Well, they will do some. I'm sure they're doing some sort of uh, pro- programming to help predict, uh, you know, how many of what cars to build and that mm-hmm. kind of thing. But when it comes to retail, 
Yeah, it, they're, they're not really paying that much attention there. Well, you know, we this was what we were working on for the Titan back, gosh, I mean, this was 16 years ago, what I think it was about then. And and the problem, you know, the, the one problem the OEMs have is, is, you know, you look at the data and you say, wow, you know, green minivans are selling like crazy in Florida. And you're like, okay, well, is that because people want, there's a high demand for green minivans or is that because you just put a $5,000 incentive on the green minivans that weren't selling and now everybody's buying green minivans, but they really don't want them, right? And so, so you know, because <laughs> ideally you would, you would build the exact right thing, put it in the exact right place and not have to load it down with incentives you know, to, to, to sell it. Uh, you know, that's the, that's the holy grail, of course. And then they know within the next two or three years, they're going to have a, uh, uh, an onslaught of green minivans coming back. <laughs> yes. But well, look, and that's when the data is going to say, put all the trunk money on those. <laughs> exactly. So, well, look, this has been overly informative. Uh, let's change up a little bit. And, and unless, uh, Ryan, you have anything to add, Chad, anything else that you'd like to sort of just add to the conversation around AI? I like I'll add something. I like the analogies that, that always, I'm not as smart as Chad. So I need somebody to explain it to me in stupid terms most of the time. <laughs> and uh, he gave me a great analogy that stuck with me. And so I've shared it a couple of times and I think it works, but when dealers say, do we really need this? Is this something that we're actually going to really need to do? Or can we just keep plugging along the way that we're plugging along? And I've got, you know, I've been, I've been appraising cars for a long time. I've got a good gut instinct of what's going to sell and what it's going to sell for kind of back to what, what you were talking about last week on refresh Friday with, uh, with uh, Joe and Bill and Sean and the team over there, but is the gut better than the data? And uh, I think the analogy that fits is kind of where are we going? If you think about how did you used to get from one place to the next, you'd pull out your Rand McNally, you'd study that map, you'd look, you'd try to figure out how to fold it. You'd write down some little instructions to help yourself along the way. And that was the way that everybody did it. And then the internet happened when we get MapQuest and you thought it was the greatest thing in the world because you could just plug in the destinations and print out your directions. Really, you know, fundamental change, right? So what happened after that? Well, AI is powering things like Waze where not only do you put in where you want to go, but you're getting insight as you're driving from other users. And that's a foundational change because now the things I printed that, that that's obsolete pretty quickly when there's a traffic jam on 35 and I can't get through, right? My estimated time of arrival has changed dramatically. AI and ways and some of those industry, uh, some of the AI use in other industries. I think that's, that's the analogy we need to think about in terms of pricing and stocking and all of these decisions we're making around what to pay for a car. You can get insight from things that are happening in the market. You don't have to look at a historical average. You don't have to look at a, an old number. You can actually see what's happening through prediction based on the market as it sits today. So I think that that analogy really helps. The transition from trying to figure out how to fold a map to all I have to do is open ways and I'm going to know about every cop. I'm going to know about every slowdown. I'm going to know about every slight mm -hmm. detour I can take to improve my results. We're seeing the same thing in stocking and pricing and delivery of units too. Pretty cool. It's it's definitely an interesting time that uh, that we're seeing in in this evolution of the industry. And as Chad said, it's hockey stick. It's only going to get better as we can learn and program algorithms that are dealer specific. That's that's really cool stuff. So, Estimated time of arrival. It changes. <laughs> Ryan, Chad, we got a few questions for you, real quick. Um, I'll get started with it, Ryan. Best car you've ever owned and why? Oh man, I have a sickness. Uh, I I have <laughs> had like forty cars and I'm only forty. Um, my my wife started complaining until the day I looked at her and said, "Hey, I could be trading wives as much as I trade cars," and that shut that conversation. <laughs> uh, probably I'm I'm going to answer with two. My first car because it was my first was a 1980 280ZX. It was 10th anniversary edition black and red and rust and uh, i loved that car you wish you still had that i i do wish i still had that car uh i bought it six months before i was able to drive i'd saved up all my uh working at a restaurant money to buy that car so i love that car i also have a fondness for jeeps i've had several of them over over the years so i like just like the old cjs a lot um yeah 
yeah anything with wheels and motors is is of interest to me <laughs> chad well i i don't have the same addiction but i am a i i am a fellow uh, uh st louis boy and uh and my first car was a 280z it was an 83 wow. had all the rust it was blue um it talked to you it was awesome <laughs> t-tops though it was awesome I remember that it was one. the greatest car ever yeah i remember that car that was yeah. awesome wow um alex next question I actually don't have them in front of me, Jeff. You kept them to yourself. I, I did not. You were shared. I'm pretty sure. Really? Uh, okay. Uh, Ryan, what have you recently binge watched or are currently binge watching? So some of it's my profession, but um, I've caught enough of these episodes of Westworld to think about AI in the Terminator sense. Have you seen this show? <laughs> I have not, but that's one that's on HBO. That's yeah, it, it, it's kind of interesting. So we watched that. My wife and I also watched, um, oh, the Rajnashi Colt. I can't remember the name. Wild Country, I think it was. Or Wild. Oh, that was a good one. Like, we just finished yeah, that it was, too. It was interesting to. I, I lived through that, but I was young enough. I didn't really know what was going on. So that's it for me. That's on Netflix. Yeah, I want to check that yeah. one out. Chad. Yeah, the, I haven't I haven't done that in a while. But the last one was uh, was Suits which was, it's a killer. It's a wow. killer. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think that one's also a little old. So, you know, it is. Yeah. So it's, Chad, it's Friday and obviously you're at work. We see the employees walking behind you. Yes. Um, if you weren't at work today, what would you be doing? I'd be on the golf course. <laughs> no question. <laughs> Sweet. Ryan. Yeah. Uh, motorcycle probably that's, that's my alone time is go, uh, go out and get lost on a motorcycle somewhere good deal what's your favorite app at the moment not app as an appetizer but app that you have on your phone <laughs> <laughs> i spend a lot of time on uh car stories app track you might have heard of it it's really cool. <laughs> nice <laughs> um, that was not a feeder question <laughs> <laughs> good answer good answer chad don't say the same which, which one of you is the cmo <laughs> Man. Right, apparently. Uh, no, my my favorite is uh, is Audible. Uh, I've got a I've got a long commute, so you know I get to I fire up my audio books on on two x speed, and I, I I can crank through quite a bit. How long is your commute? It's it's about thirty or forty minutes. No, it's not too bad. Not, not too, too bad. bad. It's not it's not like New York style, but you know it's long for down here. Memorial Day weekend. Any plans, gentlemen? I'm going to go help my brother uh, renovate his house. Uh, so that sounds like fun. <laughs> Crack open yeah. some beers. Get it it's done. It's going to be a lot of work. A lot of work. <laughs> Ryan, Memorial Day weekend. What's up? Yeah, we have a graduation party for my son this evening. And then uh, he is participating in a drum corps over the summer. So we're driving him down to Nashville on Monday and, and, uh, and back. I'm a big what, fan what of uh, drum corps. Oh, drum corps. Drum corps. Okay. Yeah. yeah, big it's like fan of drum band, corps. But a, yeah, professional. It's it's it's, it's crazy. It's a badass. I, I drum corps is badass. Uh, drone corps. You know, no. uh, uh, that's this conversation. Yeah. That's where my head's at. But yeah, get a hundred drones in one spot, Alex. <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah, moving on. Anyway, so gentlemen, thank you so much. Um, anyone that's uh, of course viewing, um, you can catch up with us on. <laughs> book um if you've been over in uh, the refresh forums and you're still a lurker please sign up uh and then of course if alex gets his shit into gear we'll have a copy of this over on everyone um youtube you can su uh, subscribe to the channel over there and uh, catch up on all of our previous episodes i like how you always uh try to try to give me crap for not getting it on youtube it only takes like two or three days but if jeff does it which it would never ever happen all right alex so back at you and your can drunk or can i just like remove you from the from the room here just delete <laughs> should be a big delete button up here <laughs> hey, hey jeff we're coming up on maybe maybe not as quickly as i think but aren't we coming up on a pretty big anniversary for the refresh forums when did you was that april 08 09 uh, you know i i should know this I, I, I think I, 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 know this I, I think I, th I think May. 
Yeah, I think it's 14 years. I think next year will be 15 years. We're going to have a big party at the vast offices. Perfect. <laughs> Let's do it. Come, come on down. Come on down. <laughs> we definitely should have some type of 15 year old. I mean, it's hard to believe 15 years uh, dealer refresh has been around. It's, it's, yeah. awesome. it's congrats. Yeah, thanks. It's pretty cool. So I'll have to go it's back. Welcome, I'm pretty sure 15 years is next year. I'll go back and look and be like, damn, it's this year. <laughs> I always think it's, sorry, not to draw this out, but I always think it's really interesting that you kind of see the same things percolate back up. And it's, I love the idea of bringing back up old old things we talked about eight, nine years ago. Oh, and no. those questions are still relevant. It's yeah. so interesting to see how ahead of the time uh, Refresh was and, and to see all those names that pop back up when you do that. So thanks. Thanks. Uh, I've told you guys a bunch of times, I have an incredible debt. Uh, to you um, for what you did through Refresh for me and i um, really grateful to be a part of, of the community. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. We're glad that you're part of the community. I've always been there and I've always given a, a tremendous amount of insight. So, yeah. all right. All the stuff. Sure. Yeah, I'm going to start crying. <laughs> <laughs> and Drew, Drew gave us the, uh, yeah, May 2006 date was when Re Dealer Refresh started, and I think we fired up the forums uh, in 2009. Yeah. I don't remember the exact month. And you made me do it. It's like, that is to do a forums. I'm like, no, 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 I don't want to get all into that. No, let's do it. We're going to do it. I'm like, all right, we'll do it. <laughs> uh, all right, everyone, thanks so much. Right, Chad, thank you. Enjoy the weekend. Ryan, enjoy the weekend. Speak to you guys thank soon you. and see you next week. Uh, next week, we've got uh, Nick Cybella with, we're going to be talking about virtual reality and how it applies to the automotive industry. So this should be good fun. See you guys next Friday. Bye now.